an urban ecological perspective, we are now at a crossroads. Around the city, we are building communities where there are no front yards or backyards, or the small spaces they do have lack trees or other forms of greenery. This means there's no wildlife, so we have children within these communities growing up without the experience of seeing or interacting with a butterfly or a bird. So what can you do about this? First, use your space. Devote some part of your front yard or your backyard to plantings that can support wildlife. Here at Corinne's is a fantastic example of a backyard which is also a haven for wildlife. That was obviously our plan that we wanted a lot of birds in here so we um, brought in a lot of different plants. We bought them fairly established to start with because we wanted the impact straight away. It's heading all in the right direction. It's only a very young garden but there's structure and there's variety. So literally from the ground up there are plants for animals to live in, live on, live under. There is substrate, so there is bark chips, but there's wood and there are rocks that again, insects, lizards and other invertebrates can live in and live on. And then as we move up, it's not just grass and then tall trees. All the way through you have structure, so different animals are going to utilise different parts of this habitat, which is fantastic. If you've got a young garden like this garden, while it's got great structure developing, it doesn't actually have any hollows and 15% of our native bird species rely on hollows as habitat to breed in or a shelter. So creating or building your own nest box or buying a readily made nest box is a great option if you want to attract more wildlife. There are also other structural elements you can introduce. Make your own frog pond having bigger than a bird bath, if you have pond with emergent vegetation in it, you're likely to attract one of our six common species of frogs from around Adelaide, or making a rockery with nooks and crannies in it, so lizard species, be they skinks, be they blue tongues, are able to move in and have safe havens in there. You can use piping and other commercially made products are available to help with lizards as well. When it's fine weather and when visitors come over, they just can't believe from what they saw three years ago to how much developed it is and when we're sitting having barbecues uh, just the outlook is beautiful great scenery for kids and we just love it we just love the whole thing secondly become involved in your council's plans to revitalize the parks and the local area here in the city of Playford the council has established an indigenous garden where they are growing up their plants and then collecting the seeds and taking them to other areas and planting them up. This enables demonstrations of the original flora to be easily observed and they'll also attract local wildlife to areas that were otherwise unoccupied. Within our city, we've actually had a huge amount of uh, clearance happen historically. So we actually only have about 3% of our remnant vegetation remaining within our city. Um, so basically that means that there's very little habitat anymore for our uh, fauna to be surviving in and so you run the high risk of local extinctions so for our activities it's really critical for habitat preservation. It's also very important for other aspects of land management such as soil erosion control and maintaining good topsoil, a variety of reasons. One outstanding outcome of the seed orchard is here at Rosewood Park. Six years ago, this was a staid and formal garden of lawns and roses. The Playford City Council removed the roses and took the indigenous plants and developed this beautiful park, which is a great attraction for wildlife into the heart of Elizabeth. I think initially uh, it was all, oh, you know, natives, they're all ratty, they're gonna look messy, you know. Uh, we want the roses and they're all pretty flowers. Um, but now I think they've seen, you look at the plants in their own right, every plant is special. You use different plants and colours and textures um, and they can help promote each other. So it's just being a bit creative and trying different things with natives. And you can prune things, you can do tote free to them, you can do everything you can do to every other exotic. Just play around with them and have a bit of fun. That's what it's about, having fun. I'm learning every day about local native plants and what you can and what you can't do to it. Ask your nurseries about local native plants. Where can I get them? The more people that ask for local native plants in nurseries, the nurseries will start buying them in. 
and then it'll be a lot easier to access. But if they start just buying all the exotics, a nursery's only going to keep supplying what you ask for. But, you know, we've got to help the nurseries too by promoting that we do want these local provenance plants and we're willing to buy them. And finally, you should always ask yourself, where is the wildlife? We have shown that cities can have a diverse and spectacular array of animals. We can share our space with many species and some in fact do better in the city than they do in their natural habitat. So we should take every opportunity to create space for wildlife. Here in the city of Playford cafe area, the employees share their cups of coffee with lizards and with frogs. So my question to you is, have you seen wildlife today?